In this video, we'll run through a couple more examples of adding roofs using the Roof Generator to demonstrate some of the Roof Generator features. I've created a new project, and I'm just going to start by making a rectangular wall layout. I'll use our rectangular wall shortcut. And let's make this 40 feet by 24 feet. And then I'm going to switch to the roof layout drawing model pair. The roof generator lets you add roofs either in the 2D layout or the 3D model. I personally like to use the 3D model. Some of the other videos will demonstrate how to do it in the 2D drawing. First thing we'll do is start the roof generator function from the roof menu. And now if you right click, you can see you have a couple of options here for whether you're going to be truss framing it or rafter framing it. And the only difference between these two is how it's going to calculate the height of the roof when it gets added. We have uh, the parameters, which we'll get to. We have some shortcuts for different overhangs. And then we have add by points, add by walls, and add by lines. Here's where you're choosing if you're going to be adding this in the 2D layout. You'll use either add by points or add by lines. Or if you're adding this in the 3D model, you can use this selection, add by walls. So I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to select a wall in the layout. So as soon as I click on a wall, the roof parameters form will open. This particular roof parameters form is showing the calculations based on truss framing. So the parameters that appear are using the parameters of trusses in order to calculate the height of the roof that we're about to add. I always recommend selecting a roof system that matches the thickness of the top cord that you're going to be using. So if it's going to be a six inch top cord, then hit the select button and select a six inch roof system. So the size of the top cord will populate. You can set the pitch either as a ratio like six to 12, or you can do an angle by entering the angle value followed by the letter A. So if I want 30 degrees, I'll do 30 and then a capital A. The fascia height is the cut that's going to be added to these truss tails or rafter tails if you're doing rafter framing. And you can control if that fascia cut is going to be vertical or perpendicular to the slope of the roof. If you wanted to cut all the way through the top cord or a rafter, then just give it a large fascia cut. And in this case, I'll cut it perpendicular to the slope of the roof. Then we're going to select the plate height for the walls that this roof is going to be sitting on. This is a global Z value, and if you know the value, you can just type it in. Otherwise, you can hit the Get button and select the wall, and it'll automatically grab the value. So I'll hit Get, and I'm going to choose the wall from the 3D model. So I'll click 3D, then click on the wall, and now it's giving me the same value, but that is the, the height at the top of that wall that I just selected. If it was a second floor, it would give a higher value because it's a global Z height. Eve height, I'm going to come back and calculate that. The overhang, we can define how far that overhang is going to be, and that's measured from the exterior framing line of the selected wall. And then we can choose if we're going to do an over the wall height or a butt cut. And to see what these mean, I'm going to click this help button up in the top left and that opens a little help picture. So we can see here the plate height is this height up to the top of the wall. The overhang is the distance from the exterior framing to the end of the rafter or truss uh, top cords. The fascia height is the distance that it's going to cut off of the rafter or top cord. And then here, in this case, with truss framing, it gives this option of either butt cut, so the distance from the top of the wall to the bottom of the top cord, or the over the wall height is the distance from the top of the wall to the top of the top cord. So here I'm going to choose uh, the butt cut, and I'll do 6 inches. 
So I'm just going to left click to close that. We have butt cut selected and then I'll type in 6. So now I'm going to come back and calculate the eave height. So what that is doing is determining that z height. I'll go back to this help page again. So it's actually this point here, the top of the top cord or rafter if you're doing rafter framing. So it's that distance from our global z equals 0. So from, from that z equals 0 up to that point. And that's the point that Vertex is going to use when it actually places this roof. So I have that calculated. I'm going to click OK. And we have a black line across the top of our first selected wall. And then I'm going to continue and select around the wall layout. Now it has me connected to the end of the line here. So I have to continue in the same direction. I can't double back. So I'm going to come over here and left click. So then it extends the line across the next wall and just continue around. Now every once in a while, like if you have a lot of interior walls, you might get a message that looks like this. Previous eave parallel with digitized element selection not valid. All that means is you clicked on a wall that was parallel to the previous wall. So just try again. And that just comes up a lot of times if you have a lot of those interior walls that get in the way. So you can just kind of rotate your model around and then make sure you get a clear shot of your next wall. So now that I've gone all the way around, the black line doesn't close, but that's okay. It doesn't have to. And now I'm just going to hit confirm. And it always creates a hip roof, but then you can change it. So I'm going to hit escape to get out of the roof generator function select the roof and this is actually a sketch roof right now it's kind of a temporary roof it's not a real roof yet and while it's in this phase we can right click on one of these eave ends and select a different gable type so if i want to change this from a hip to a gable roof i can just select gable and it will change that end and then to convert this into a real roof we right click again. This time I'm not right clicking on an eave line, just somewhere with the roof selected and then select convert surfaces to roofs. Now we can verify that the roof is at the right height by checking the section and pulling a couple of dimensions. So I'm going to switch to the 2D plan. So I just hit F2 and we're going to go up to the view tab up at the top. And we have this function here that just lets us generate a temporary section view. This isn't a section view that you'd save and keep on a drawing sheet, but just one to, to make when you're just checking something. So I'll run the section function and click a start and end point. The arrow indicates the direction that I'm going to be viewing. Then I'll hit confirm. We can enter a distance how far we want to see from the cut line. Uh, zero just means we'll see to infinity. And here's my section. And what I'm going to do is just check the distance from the exterior framing line at the top of the wall up to the bottom of the top cord. So actually what I can do is just extend this line up. I'm going to lock in vertical. So I'll hit I on the keyboard and just run it right through so I get an intersection point there. And I will use this uh, Verify Dimension tool. Snap to this corner point here is my start point. And then right there, I'll snap to that intersection point. And you'll see I get six inches. So that is exactly what I wanted. And I'm also going to double check the overhang. So I'll go from the same point as my point one. This time I'm going to lock in horizontal. So U in the keyboard. And we're going to snap to the top of the, uh, the end of the top cord right there. And so dimension number two is one foot zero inches. So that is exactly what we wanted there as well. So I'm going to close this window. No need to save it. Go back to the 3D. And I'll delete this roof and we'll run through another example. So I'll start the roof generator again. Right click. This time we'll use rafter framing. 
just to demonstrate that the form is a little bit different. Um, so instead of top court size, we have rafter size. Then we also have the C cut. So if I go back to the help picture, you see the picture is a little bit different. So the C cut is this dimension here. How far do you want that roof sitting on top of the wall? So if you want it to cut through the wall entirely, then you put in whatever the thickness of that framing layer is. So in this case, I have a three and a half inch wall. That's what I'll put for my seat cut. And then go back and recalculate the eave height. So I'll click OK, select a wall. And now before I select the next wall, what I can do is right click, click this first question mark, and come back to the roof parameters. So let's say I want to change something about this next slope. Let's say it's going to be the pitch. Um, if I want to go to a 12-12 pitch, for example, I can change that there. And I can change any other values in here as well. I'll come back and do another example where we're changing the plate height. So we'll click OK. I'm not going to recalculate the eave height because I want to keep that the same eave height. And then select the next wall. Then before I select this wall, I'm going to change the slope back. So I right click, hit the parameters button, change the slope back to a 612. And let's say I want to change the overhang. Let's say in this case, I want this to be a 24 inch overhang. Click OK. Select that wall. You notice the black line is a little bit further away from the wall now. And then before I select the last wall, I'm going to do the 12-12 pitch again. And I'll change this back to a 12-inch overhang. And then select that last wall and confirm. And so now I have different slopes and different overhangs. Now for the next example, I'm going to do a little bit more complicated wall layout. So I'm going to switch back to the first level walls and draw a different shape here. I'll use the same wall type. And I'm going to turn off my rectangular walls and closed wall shortcuts. It turns both of those on, by the way, when you do the rectangular walls. So I'm going to do something like Actually, I should use my alternating constraints here. It's a lot easier. Something like this. Actually, let's move this wall down a little bit. Oops. And then I'm also going to change the plate height. So I will select one, two, three, four walls. Go to properties. And let's make these 120 inches. So now let's see what we can do with the roof generator on this. Okay, so I first start with, let me start with this tall wall here. I'm going to left click on that one. Now I need to get the new plate height. Uh, I'm also, let's go back to a 612 pitch here. All right, so I'm going to hit get, 3D model, click on that wall, and that gives me the 120 inch plate height. Uh, we'll stick with the 12 inch overhang and the three and a half inch seat cut. So I'm going to recalculate that E height. Actually, it looks like it did it automatically. Uh, now I can click OK and continue tracing around my tall walls. And now before I select this wall, I'm going to right click, hit my parameters question mark, get the next plate height from the 3D model. And yes, it did automatically recalculate that Eve height, so I don't have to click, click the calculate button there. And click OK here. So you notice the black line jumps down, and now I'm going to select the next walls. 
and again I don't have to worry about these black lines not connecting here it's gonna it's gonna do that automatically when I hit confirm and so I get a pretty complicated roof there created simply and automatically uh, I'm gonna select our sketch roof right click and convert surfaces to roofs by the way I did hit escape before I could do that uh, to end the uh, roof generator function and now that we're converted to an actual roof I can move the edge points and clean up these overhangs a little bit and this I'll do in the 2d layout so I'll select this roof slope grab this edge slide it over so I just did a single left click on that grab point and then I'm gonna snap it to the framing line of this wall here and we'll do the same up on this slope here single click on the center of that edge line and snap it to this framing corner here so it just cleans up those overhangs and the next step would be to add a little wall or adjust the wall shaping to clean up that hole there but that's a couple of examples that we can show the power of the roof generator